In the year 1997, the future is in chaos and turmoil. Mankind is on the brink of extinction. Brave survivors band together and build a time displacement apparatus to receive a signal from a parallel future. This transmission is the Boondicott. the J. Sarge music frame. This is Steven Escudero in the old Podcast Express, and I'm talking to whoever's listening. This is the BTILC podcast, the audio show dedicated to the motion picture known as Big Trouble in Little China. I am joined on this third edition of the po- of the BTILC podcast in this glorious year, 2016, by the man behind the podcast, GF Movies, the one and only Charlie. How you doing, Charlie? Hey, I'm doing great. Yeah, thanks uh, Thanks for having me on. So I'm sure it was a curiosity when you were like, some guy with a Big Trouble in Little China podcast is randomly on Twitter being like, hey, let's do an episode. That must have been... Yeah, you got in touch with me a while ago, man. Uh, and I said yes and then just got real busy. Uh, but basically, the GF movies, his girlfriend movies, uh, it's, these, it's this podcast I do where I show my... My, my girl, either girlfriend at the time or just friends who are girls uh, because basically moved out to LA and then it just turned out that all of my friends were women and okay. so I was hanging out with them and then I'd have these conversations with them and they just would not know about any of the action movies I was talking about <laughs> and I've always been a, I've always been like a podcaster at heart I, okay. I feel like you kind of are the same I'm, I, I'm guessing you listen to like Smodcast and stuff right? For sure I'm a big Kevin Smith <laughs> A night, or whatever you want to call it, a smod, a smodian of USC University, and exactly, uh, yeah. And they're yeah. always saying, "Yeah, it's just get your get your stuff together, record it, put it out there," because it's you know, it's, at the end of the day, it's just fun. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I I did the first episode with Big Trouble in Little China, and, and that that's what caught was, my eye was that uh, when I was starting this podcast, I was like, "Man, I want to listen to a podcast about Big Trouble in Little China." So I did an iTunes search, Big Trouble in Little China, and I got like. A bunch of podcasts that had done episodes, but no one podcast that was just only talking about the movie. So I was yeah. like, man, it would be really cool if I reached out to these people and got their pulse of the movie now and mm-hmm. plug their podcast and, you know, really try to globalize it, open up the scope and like really understand what people really think about this movie 30 years after its creation. I know, 30 years, dude. That's uh, I like, I, I started watching it. Uh... Today, oh, so so now my my co-host on this podcast is my is my now girlfriend Marianne, and she's she's over here. You Hi. can't, she probably can't hear, but she's awesome, and she's still like every other girl I've ever met has not seen a lot of these movies. And I told her I was going to do this interview with you, so she, she was like, "Oh, I've never seen that movie." And I was like, "How? How do the how do you people not know <laughs> like, all of like because all of my movies at one point or another they were on just like." daytime Saturday television and I was just in front of the TV watching like Fox and I remember the two movies that were like number one or three movies it was always Commando it was always sure. 
uh, it was always uh, John Bla- Matrix. Uh, not Blade Runner. His daughter was constantly getting taken over and over. Always getting taken. <laughs> like what the hell? And then um, and then always the Running Man. And then Big Trouble in Little China was like right up there. And it was every single week. And I uh, I had a dad that like he were, he owned like a like a metal fabrication shop or heating and air conditioning and stuff. Cool. So I would just be hanging out at the office watching a black and white television. And just going through all these old 80s movies. And so they got like such a, such a warm place in my heart. And, it's, and I started watching uh, Big Trouble in Little China today again. Because I feel like that's the movie you should like really... If you love 80s movies, if you love action movies, that's the movie you should go and revisit every year. Because you'll see something new every time. And it is really different it's like very unique from other movies that were made around then like half because it's john carpenter half because it's uh russell crowe and it's it's and it's also just made with so much oh, roughly, fun roughly, yeah oh yeah roughly, yeah I, like i was uh <laughs> don't mix like, your russell made... don't mix your russells you must never cross yeah. the russells <laughs> no we should never cross the russells like have you ever noticed they're never on screen at the same time for anything no i man. Th- i think what would it be funny if the dead and tombstone do not if (laughs) i'm sorry we're like trying to kill you we're trying to out joke each other right now (laughs) you go you go first (laughs) i was gonna say that the quick and the dead and tombstone may take place around the same time frame but never Ah. the two paths shall cross like uh it's like a tarantino-esque like shared universe yes Uh, what if all westerns took place in the same in the same wild west (laughs) that'd be great that'd be like it's like you just see in the background clint eastwood like multiple clint eastwoods because he's he's it's him from uh quick and the uh, the good the good the bad he's the man with no name three times he's 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 the Django fett they made a million clones of him and he's in the High Plains Drifter. Oh no, I think that the internet is failing uh, us now. The mule for Sister Mary, like all of his cowboys are just, they're like hanging out in the bar. <laughs> or Sister Catherine, something like that. And uh, yeah, anyways, I was just, my, my, my little quick crappy joke was going to be, what if Russell Crowe is Kurt Russell, but in werewolf form? Oh <laughs> shit, I'd buy that. Well, I, what if Russell Crowe is just what happens when, uh, when, you, when, you take, when you take a Kurt Russell overseas, he just gets a little bit, more scruffy, a little bit more uh, sullen uh-huh. and tough. Yeah, and, he gets uh, a little angrier, starts singing acoustic guitar. <laughs> yeah. Kurt Russell's nice yeah. and mellow. Kurt Russell is a goddamn treasure. <laughs> like, the, well, the first fucking thing he says in this movie... Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't, do you swear in this? Yes, we, we, we can swear. It's fine. I, don't, okay. I, don't, I, I have no proclivities against swearing. Fuckity fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> the first thing, as, as soon as he's on screen and he's in the truck talking to no one at all, yeah. I just imagine he's broadcasting out to just a bunch of like either a bunch of truckers that are like, this guy is insane, but I, <laughs> it's like, like he's his own like AM radio station or that his <laughs> never, radio is never not hooked t- up to anything. Never touch CV9 because that's always the Jack Burton station. We can never shut that exactly. Out. Yeah, like don't talk over Jack Burton. He's got words of wisdom. <laughs> I would, I would listen to Jack Burton like have a podcast all day long. Oh I would god. never end. That's and oh my god, that's the dream. If Jack Burton lived in the age of podcasting, yeah. like if they're really gonna remake the movie with The Rock, he needs to have his own podcast. Like let's update yeah. it, make it digitally new. You know what I mean? Like yeah, digitally. So, I mean, you can't. Here's the thing: it can't. You can't replace Kurt Russell as Jack Burton. Never. He, they're, they're the same. They're, they're the same character. Like, I, and, like, I'll give it to The Rock. He has a lot of swagger about him. Like, he's got a... I love him. I, I loved him in, like, Pain and Gain. And, uh, like, I think he's actually pretty underrated for what he does. For but sure. he's not Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell is just a fun dude. There are so many moments in this movie where you get the, where you know that something just wasn't scripted and they just kept rolling on it and something it wasn't even hilarious but it's just very genuine to that character and something that they would say he does no. this great job of of playing a, like he is a horse's ass you know he's overconfident but he never really learns anything he still saves the day <laughs> like 
like yeah. his like his mantra of like it's all in the reflexes so, like oh yeah it kind of is because he's just a, he's a he's the ultimate like just dude that's always got it under control despite having no idea what's going on around him he's the beautiful uh oblivious uh drunken master sort of idiot in that universe yeah that who just it's all in the reflexes of course it's all in the reflexes he <laughs> told us the first monologue of the movie was all in the reflexes of course at the end of the movie it's going to be course. like without even thinking he knows it and um, like i mean so i don't i don't know what you want to you want to talk i mean, I mean you, this is your podcast so i don't no, want to i don't want to we're doing we're doing awesome. hijack we're awesome right now we're taking <laughs> ass we're taking names um, I just I just wanted to pick your your brain and do exactly what we're doing right now. Just have you know sort of a candid conversation with you and learn more about uh, girlfriend movies. Um, oh yeah. Well, one of the things that really piqued my interest because I initially heard that BTILC episode, and then I'm like, wow. And then I looked at all the names of all the girlfriends in all the podcast history, and you told me some of them are your friends. But I was like, man, this guy gets around. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he can manage to like have the conversation with all these women that like hey i do this podcast can you want to be on my podcast like i've had people on my well, podcast before but it's you know it's like a special thing to be on someone's podcast you know what i mean it is it is and i think i think you're handling it the same way i handle it where it's it's a conversation and we have this mutual thing right now where we both love this movie and that's sort of the base of what we're going to be talking about but then we can go other places it's fine it's it's uh it's 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 just a chat amongst friends like i trust that you're a cool guy so i'm not here to like catch you in the lie or trying to uncover some dirt we're both two just human beings that are genuinely enjoying each other's time you know and i feel yeah. like like you do that real well i heard i've i've i caught up on your podcast and like Whoa. uh there was a nice get uh, on the last episode. You got the the was it the guy with the band with the with the, the, the bandoliers like, and the two revolvers? Oh, yeah, God. Gerald Okamura. Yeah. That was amazing. <laughs> I, I originally started the podcast and I haven't had a lot of time. This is a great to meet someone you know knew I could tell the stories and feel fresh because I'm still kind of looking for a co-host who's as obsessed about this you know old movie as I am. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I when I was thinking about doing the the podcast. I just put up a Facebook post and Gerald Okamura liked it. And I was like, oh my God, that guy's in the movie. He liked yeah. the Facebook post. He's out, he's down with this podcast idea. I'm going to swing it. I'm going to see if I can get him. Oh and man. He, he was super nice. It was just kind of a logistical challenge to, uh, to get him on uh, technology <laughs> to have the yeah. podcast. Cause think about it. He's like a martial arts legend. Uh -huh. He knows how to kick ass. He doesn't know how to connect a high speed internet. Yeah, you know what I mean. And I think like that's a really cool idea. Is just like I mean, yeah, talk to fans like me, but every now and then just get some like just like you don't have to get the stars, just get the guys that were there because like that like if they're happy with the production, then you know that it was a great for set sure. To be for yeah. sure. Like I've worked as a PA, and I've worked I've worked a little bit as an actor. And Super cool. It's, I was it's looking at some little... short videos. I oh yeah, those Sploosh, are... <laughs> I saw Sploosh, which was very interesting, and Scat Porn I thought was was really genius. Thanks. <laughs> I highly recommend Scat. Um, <laughs> it's, well, it, that comes from just like my sense of humor, and uh, and I think the and the reason why I've I've lasted so long with uh, with Marianne here is that she has the exact same sense of humor, and we're definitely partners in crime on everything. Hi, hun. <laughs> um so but it comes from just like stupid like i love stupid stuff and i think that's why and i'm not saying big trouble in little china is stupid but i think that it doesn't try to it doesn't like like when the, when they see a fun idea like it's like when they have a fun idea you can tell they do it and then they find a way to put that in or there's just a million other fun ideas that at least they tried but then they got left on the editing room floor but it's not a movie that is trying to be real serious, you know? No, it's, it's trying to have as much fun as possible. It, it, it's not afraid to be goofy. It's not afraid to explore and experiment. And it has a very organic feel to it. That is, you yeah. know, the thing that, one of the, one of the things that makes it so great. 
So exactly. you know, movies, I'm curious about your podcast art. What is your podcast art? How does it relate? I'm, it's it's like seems like a non sequitur to me. The like My old art. gangly man. Yeah, your your podcast art. Oh, <laughs> um, well, I made that a while ago. It's uh, so it's just like a muscly dude. It's like it's like the most manly guy I could find. <laughs> and then I just wrote in like I just wrote in pink girlfriend movies over it. I've I've since kind of like re I read I redid a poster that it's a little more stylized. Like it's funny because like my podcast is also like if you pay attention to it or you see the posts and all that, it's like you might as well also be tracking my my education in Photoshop too. <laughs> so so the, the posters for each episode get a little more intricate, a little faster, and all that. So uh, yeah, it's just I mean I I love doing it, man. I, uh, I've always wanted to do a podcast and I just, I, I mean, I posted a, this one episode that's like a throwback to this podcast I did maybe six years ago well, with some of my best friends and uh, listening to that, I was like, yeah, this is why, this is why everyone does it because they just want to, at, at the very end of the day, and I got this from, you know, Mosier and Smith is like, they're just, if the podcast, at the very least, is their excuse to to hang out for like an hour or two every week. For sure. And yeah. like when you got when you got friends, you got people you care about. Sometimes that's hard to do. Like like um, so, my co-hosts uh, Molly, Ariel, and Gabriella. Like I've never dated them. They've just been my friends through improv or just through like kind of like just like living in them because you know I'm in LA, so everyone's got roommates. And, uh -huh. and uh, Ariel and Molly, I was on improv teams with. And when those teams kind of disbanded, you know, I miss them. I, I really do miss hanging out with them uh, because you, you really just like, especially in improv, you kind of know what everyone, like you know exactly what's going on in someone's life. And you know what their fears are, what they're afraid of, like, or what, what they kind of want out of life. It's a very intimate art form to share with other yeah. people on stage. And so when that went away, I was like, well, if I never see you guys at the bars or anything anymore, then how about you just come on the podcast and we can just shoot the shit about these movies that I love. And like, I honestly think that that was probably the best thing I ever did for the podcast was stop trying to shoehorn who whatever girl I was dating at the time, wherever, and just yeah. like have like these like really funny women on and just hear what they honestly have to think. And for the most part, it worked. Cause like, I mean, Ariel did, uh, Ariel did Roadhouse and she ended up loving it. And that's like, that's <laughs> a dude movie, you know, <laughs> that's like, that's like, it's, oh yeah. And Marianne was there, of course. <laughs> and then Molly, yeah. like and Molly has her own like quirky sense of humor where, you know, we had Revenge Week, and she's like, I want to watch Kirk Cameron's Left Behind. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, let's do that. And then it turns out to be a blast. And it's like, but the, but the theme, like the motif of the podcast is still there. Is we're watching movies that they have never seen, and they have no reason to see. Because they're not a dude. They don't have that, like, social conditioning to want to see things blow up and to see, like... <laughs> big fake 80s tits all over the screens <laughs> totally and and they and they don't reach it from that place of like nostalgia that you two that that even if a movie hasn't aged as well mm -hmm. like because you grew up with it you still you yeah know, you still feel you still feel the feels for it or for like the new perspective it doesn't quite yeah stick the well, way I it think, should and that's and i think in this age of like remakes like we're talking to, we talked briefly about them remaking Big Trouble in Little China, like, and, and then even to another extent, Ghostbusters, because like with Ghostbusters, you could say that that's, they're changing it completely because it's going to be all women. It's in the same universe, but they're not, they're not going to be the daughters or wives or anything. It's just going to be like a new group of characters and it's going to look vastly different. And because it doesn't really have the same people involved, it actually may be a much different style of humor. But it goes back to the thing of like, it doesn't get rid of the, all the experiences you had with Big Trouble in Little China when the new one comes out, you know? And even if you do like it, it's just another, it's in a sense, it's kind of like high production fan, like a 
fan fiction, you know? <laughs> it's like someone just had like 10, no, not even 10, like $130 million. <laughs> and the best fan fiction they could. <laughs> and uh, so, like, and even then, when, we, when I go back and watch movies, like, we just did a Michael Bay episode. And yes, I, we, I heard your Michael Bay episode with when you destroy the audience Michael Bay style by throwing five Michael Bay movies <laughs> at the audience. <laughs> I do and I not being able to stay that. conscious through any of those movies. <laughs> well, so, yeah, yeah, like I love them. I really, I honestly love Michael Bay because he's Michael Bay. I, I feel like the world needs him. The world needs a guy that just wants to blow shit up regardless of any sense of taste or <laughs> or story structure anyway like, like the dude made a two hour and 45 minute transformers movie what like that is insanity <laughs> that is absolutely insane he took a, a 20 minute cartoon and stretched it into two hours and 45 minutes that was like he was like i think there must be as much time spent in the ships there should be double that spent in the Transformers universe. That's how important it is. <laughs> and, but like, I love that in the sense that it doesn't take away my enjoy. Like, I don't look back and be like, oh man, I was an idiot because I liked, you know, uh, I'm trying to think, like, I thought the island was okay, but you know, the island probably doesn't hold up. No, the and island, I, but I the island like, holds up. The island holds up. Does? Okay. The, well, I like Ewan yeah. McGregor and Scarlett Johansson. Is, it, it has uh, it has probably like the strongest. Uh, I want to say like concept of any Michael mm -hmm. Bay movie. You know what I mean? Like, okay. It's it's got like the the sci-fi. Cool, it's a cool thing. I think it's his the first like, true. Yeah, it's probably his his first and only tr like venture into like hard sci-fi. You know? Yeah. That like that sort of like. Uh, Ray Bradbury, Philip K. Dick style of just like, you know, everything Literally. looks normal, but there's something slightly yeah. different. Like, I love that. I like that's that's by far my favorite, you know, type of like sci fi. Um, but like, at the end of the day, you can't be ashamed of like the things you liked when you were younger and because they made you who you are, you know. I wouldn't like the movies I like now unless I went through like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of watching just like, bullshit <laughs> but but it's fun you know and and that's the weird thing about uh pop cult pop culture and like watching movies as like uh like i guess it's what our generation you know does is we we learn a lot about movies mm -hmm. and we like movies that have references to other movies and nods to other movies we like to see the layers and it it gratifies us when we see those layers building in movies. Um, did uh, I just wanted to get your quick thoughts? On, yeah, yeah. On on Star Wars because oh, okay. Since we're talking the about remakes and reimaginings, yeah, The Force Awakens. Did you did you get a chance uh, to watch it? Oh yeah, loved it. I haven't seen it. <laughs> I, I want to see it. So I live next to a pretty awesome movie theater, and I wanted to see it again while it was still there. But I think this weekend it just switched over to the Revenant. So I kind of missed that chance. I'm gonna have to see it at like a bigger, like a bigger mainstream movie theater. Um, but I loved it. Now I'm as hardcore of a Star Wars fan as you can be without reading like the extended universe stuff. For sure. Uh, because those people, oh man, I am not gonna even pretend to be <laughs> as into it as them. One, because I'm not a strong reader. So, <laughs> so the fact that they can read like hundreds of books and know like. And like, no, like everyone else is like, I wonder what Luke was up to after the Return of the Jedi. They know because there's a bunch of books written about it, you know? They have his flight logs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's all good. Like, they actually know why Boba Fett is a badass, where I'm just like, that guy fucking sucks at his job. <laughs> <laughs> the, like, like, Boba Fett on screen, screen is just a bumbling idiot. <laughs> no, like, but he's. Like, if he's so good, why does he got like tore up fucking armor? Like his dad gave it to him in the prequels, and now he's just like he's just basically just trying to make rent. It seems like <laughs> no, he's no, he's not making rent. He's, <laughs> he's, what you don't get is that he's like a hipster. He's in throwback armor uh, oh, and okay. he got you know vintage. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> Bubba, oh my god, Bubba Fett has a scarf, doesn't he? <laughs> Holy shit, Bubba Fett is a Star Wars hipster. Jet That's pack. incredible. Jetpacks yeah, are so like, old republic, no one yeah. wears jetpacks anymore. He's on, he's on the Slave One, pouring himself, like doing that like pour over coffee. <laughs> <laughs> He's like he's listening to Morrissey on vinyl. <laughs> the slave one only rocks vinyl. No, exactly. No, yeah. no podcasts allowed on the slave one. No, yeah, he's like like uh, but like Greedo comes aboard, and Greedo's just like, "Hey, where's your iPad?" Or like, or "Where's your iPod?" He's like, "Uh, it's analog only on this, <laughs> on this ship." All right. <laughs> Uh, and then he no, I it. loved the new Star Wars. I thought the new yeah. Star Wars was made with the exact amount of appreciation that it that it needed. You know, it brought in the old people. It it gave the new guys ample time to develop their relationships with each other to showcase them as people. Um, it kind of I feel like it. It I mean it's basically a new hope. It's the it's the hero's journey retreaded onto some new characters. Uh, Harrison Ford takes on the mantle of the Ben Kenobi. You know, it's like it's, you yeah, can yeah. plug in whatever you want. Um, but I loved it because it was where it, it it succeeded in all the ways that the prequels failed. Where the prequels, one, you know what's going to happen from the get go. You yeah. know where it's all leading. There's no tension to begin with. No. Two. It seems like they were trying to avoid the good stuff and pay homage to the terrible stuff, you know? So you end up with Jar Jar Binks because, you know, George thinks that people liked Ewoks the best out of Return of the Jedi, you know? And you end up with, like, love triangles because... A hey, merchandising? You end up, yeah, because... And so, like... Merchandising it, doesn't lie. You, where, where do people spend money? You gotta make it... Yeah, cute. exactly. Oh, yeah, this... I can't, like, so Disney bought... Star Wars for like four million dollars. The movie's going to make two, yeah. yeah. The movie's probably going to make two billion and, and change, you know. And but I guarantee you, they've already made their money back hand over fist with merchandising. Like, have you been to a fuck? Have you been to a goddamn Toys R Us lately? It's insane. <laughs> it is. If you want to just die a little bit on the inside, go to a, Star, a Toys R Us because. I remember there just being, I mean, and this may have never been true because Toys R Us is like a huge chain. Like they had a, they had a Times Square store when I was growing up. So this is not like a mom and pop shop or anything, uh -huh. but I just don't remember there being so much branded merchandise. Every single section is a, Hey, this is a Star Wars section. This is a, my little pony section. This is this section. And there's not just, there's no place to go to like i was like i just need a robot i need a plastic robot they're like well you can go into the star wars section or you can the it's definitely not going to be in the wwe section and it's just like oh, <laughs> come on you gotta you gotta go to the dollar store if you want you know off-brand stuff apparently you gotta wait for china to make it exactly make it with their lead cheap. paint yes. and then uh and like it's just it kind of makes me sad because then there's no imagination in any of it. Uh, like I grew up playing Legos and Erector sets and Connects, and I never followed the instructions. And and what's funny is because that's kind of what the Lego movie is about. But then the Lego movie comes yeah. out with all these play sets to make the shit that you see in the movie. And it's like, come on. Come on. <laughs> that's what makes it so genius is that, you know, you can you can sell an independent ethos mm -hmm. while being a corporate entity. It's ingenious. Exactly, because we're the Pepsi generation. <laughs> yes, the taste of a new generation. The taste of a new. <laughs> oh yeah, we just yeah we just watched the the, Wayne's the World? yeah Wayne's World and just that yes. whole that like <laughs> that, that five minute rip of just like of just. All the all the product placements, yeah. and you know what's brilliant is that those they probably did pay to get in the movie, and oh, that was sure. the way that they got oh, screen man. time for it all, and didn't waste any more time. You know, that's it's genius. I love it. Um, um, see, the, the reason why I brought the Force Awakens is because that's how I wish that they would handle the big trouble in Little China reboot. Like, have the Rock ah. come in as as a new character, a fresh character, and have you know Jack Burton pass on 
this, you know, mantle as like bumbling buffoon who's yeah. involved in mystery. Well, I would love, I mean, to that sense, like, I mean, you need to have something like either than like, maybe not the knife because it's not a biz. It's not like as thing, but like Jack, loved his truck so if somehow the rock is driving that same truck <sighs> that would be the perfect oh way to kind of like have the wink and the nudge like this oh piece God. of shit i bought it off this white dude in the late in the early 90s <laughs> dude that's the best idea ever if he gets if like it was just a rock enchant and in, in getting like a haunted truck that comes with a big furry like chewbacca ripoff yeah like, that would be the best <laughs> like that would be i think that'd be good and 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 here's and but here's why I think also like reboots of movies from this era are so hard to pull off and like it's happened it's happened to a couple of Kurt Russell movies at this point um, like with the thing and you know like uh, Escape from L A this is the sequel to Escape from New York and it's like mm -hmm. you got you got to use practical effects as often as possible and that's what Star Wars did amazingly is that. It for sure. everything they they went practical where they ha where they could, and they only did CG when they needed to. And the same thing goes with uh, like Mad Max Fury Road. It would have been it would have been terrible if they actually tried to CG just like those weird rubber men flying through the air. And you just don't you don't get a con you don't get any sense of any danger or any stakes because your brain knows that they're not real. You know. For sure, but there's still something. There's still something that film translates. Like it's it's still an honest medium that once you see something tactile there, mm -hmm. it gets your blood flowing. It it has weight, like it yeah. should. You know, like if you and watch the Fast and Furious movies that rely too heavily on <laughs> CGI, there's no stakes because the cars are floating and the people yeah. are jumping out of them, and it's like, come on, uh, they they went from they went from small town. East Los Angeles, like, <laughs> DVD player, like, thieves. They still have DVDs! They still, still, yeah, still, still have DVD players. players. Like, yes. Oh, this is cutting edge. They can't afford PS2s like everyone else. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like, and, like, the Blu-ray was uh, right around the corner, so they had to get it in where they could. They knew there was a limited <laughs> shelf life. And, oh, like, yeah. like, it kind of is a, it's, it's, I mean, it's like a, what it is is it's um, Point Break yes. in East LA instead of Venice. You know, sure. it's a, it's the same movie, just moved ten miles inland, and For then sure. uh, by uh, fucking movie number seven, <laughs> they're jumping <laughs> from one skyscraper to the next in a two million dollar supercar. <laughs> like, how do you do that? How is this? Like, how are they? Like parachuting with jeeps out of, out the back of like a Hercules, <laughs> uh, like uh, airplane, and like dropping into like Thailand or so. Like it's it's, I love it. It's absolutely in, it's absolute insanity. But, but like there is there's going to be a breaking point where it's going to have to come to earth because it's it's like there's only so many times you can heighten that you know. And the and the problem and one of the things in in improv is like a rule is you find this 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 is mostly like a UCB thing is you find the strange thing and then you heighten that so whatever the okay. first weird thing that happens in the scene is you just you kind of take that and you try and find ways to just heighten it so either make it worse or make it more pronounced uh, and. And that's what the Furious movies have been doing. They're just heightening the explosions, the cars, and everything. But eventually, that you have to take a sidestep and you have to heighten emotionally because there's only, like, it, I mean, the 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 word we the term we use is you go from you know you go from honey the dishes aren't done to nuclear annihilation. Like <laughs> that's the scale. Yeah. They're almost there already. Like there's, there's not much more to do. <laughs> then they're gonna bring it back. They're gonna slow it down. They're gonna take it back to the roots and make it about yeah. one, one last DVD heist that they have to pull oh, off. Oh, that'd be great from be their great retirement home on, uh, on electric yeah. scooters only. <laughs> on the they're all in bad grandpa makeup. <laughs> yes, 
Oh man, Vin Diesel the, can pull uh, it off. He's got the voice. He's got the voice. And that's the way to justify Paul Walker still being alive. You get like an older actor in makeup to play Paul Walker. That's how you do it. Oh yeah, you get. I mean, you get. I mean, Paul Walker's brother was his body double for that movie for like half of it, and then they CG'd his face onto him. And now Paul Walker's brother actually wants to be in the movies because he had a lot of oh. fun doing it. And I think everyone is like, I think everyone else is like, uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, and, yeah. and and I think that. Well, then also like, and well, one thing that the fast and to bring it back again. Like, we're always going to try and please, find home please. place here. Please. The, the thing <laughs> please that Fast me. and Furious doesn't do is that you don't really... It's, they, tell, they have the characters tell each other how much they love them all the time. Because it's really hard for these actors and these writers to show it, you know? We're just told how much they care about each other. We're told that they're family. We're to, but... If they didn't have all those ex like scenes of exposition, I'm not sure anyone would like really. I don't like I don't know. You could really get a sense of what they mean to each other. Whereas it's in good. Big Trouble in Little China, you're like they all do. They all do so well of of establishing their relationships. Like even with him and um, Wayne, Wayne, right? They're like very beginning. They do some clunky some clunky uh, setup of like. Hey, I'm just a small town restaurant Chinese owner. He's boy. Like, yeah. He's like, and then Kurt's like, "Well, I thought we were friends. I thought this is what we do all the time." And then, but then they proceed to like drop it. They they're like, "Hey, we we got it out of the way. Now we can just we can now exist in this in this relationship that we've built, mm -hmm. like that we've paid for, you know." And like, I believe it. Like, I'm like, yeah, I, I believe that these these are just like two dudes that are constant. Like, every time they're in town, they get drunk and gamble, and then. And that's kind of it. But like, you know, you get the feeling that maybe Jack has friends like this all over the country and everyone has a very kind of organic everyone has a very organic relationship with one another. And it's and not know. Oh yeah, no, go and, ahead. <laughs> and you know that Jack Burton means it because he tells you racially racial differences notwithstanding. What are we? <laughs> Just a couple of Californians. Yeah. Just a couple of Californians have a, I love, yeah, God, yeah, I wrote down in my, I wrote down in my notes early, like, first thing, I think, yeah, I told you this, like, Kurt Russell's a goddamn treasure, and really is, like, he's, I've done some reading on him, and he is actually a genuinely beautiful human being, um, he's good friends with Martin Short, him, him and his, his partner, uh, Goldie Hawn, were really good friends with this Martin Short and his, and his wife, and when his wife died, um, Kurt Russell paid for uh, Martin Short to be flown to his like Cana his his like ca uh, cabin in the Canadian woods, and then he paid every single florist within like a hundred miles to bring over his wife his Martin Short's wife's favorite flowers and laid them along like the dock. And then he also flew every one of his friends, oh, and there's this big surprise that was this like beautiful eulogy, and it's like, yeah, that's the kind of guy. That's the kind of guy that can play Jack Burton. Wow, <laughs> I've never heard that, that story. It takes. It's beautiful, you know. Wow, <laughs> I never heard that story before. That's that's amazing. Damn. Yeah, and then, and I don't know if you've seen this on Netflix. He's got this. Uh, he more or less has a documentary about uh, a team that. A baseball team in the, Portland, Oregon, that he and his dad the ran. Battered bastards of baseball, right? Something yeah. like that. Bastards of baseball. Yeah. Yeah. I started it, and then and then my girlfriend saw me watching something with Kurt Russell in it, and was like, "What are you watching?" And I was like, <laughs> "And I was like, I guess I'll watch this when I'm moon." <laughs> oh, because it's like, a not again. But like, I think <laughs> she's she's made the rule of like when you're with me. You're with me, because I know when Kurt Russell's on the TV, <laughs> it's Kurt Russell time. <laughs> no, yeah, I think I think I think Mary and I, Marianne and I have that too. But we, with things I watch, and then and also things she watches, because like, you know, true to form, she has these movies that she loves, just like like, but they're like girl movies, and we try, and that's why I have this every every I try and do every four weeks. I do what I call a revenge movie. Is where her or one of the other girls kind of turn the tables and make me watch a movie 
a girl movie that I've never seen. And you know what? Just for as, as many movies as I, I have seen that are like guy movies, it's the same thing. I've never seen like a Katherine Heigl movie. I've never seen uh, like How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. <laughs> but like you mentioned those to a lot of women. And they're yeah, like, oh, them. yeah, I love those. And then, like, they may watch them in the same way that I watch an action, mo action movie. Like, oh, this doesn't really hold up. But they're still nostalgic about it, and they still, like, they still love it. <laughs> so sure we, uh, the, the nerd passion rages within us all. We are all equal. Hey, nerd. man, ev nerddom. everyone is a nerd. Like, I define nerdum as just a passion to want to know as much about a particular thing as possible, you know? So there's like football fan, there's football nerds. There's definitely baseball nerds. I don't know how they For keep sure. track of all those stats. Like I know people that can like name the entire roster of the Yankees in 1981. It's like, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> like you're a nerd, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and, but, and so I think that's, what's great about like being a nerd nowadays is that it almost like, it's kind of, in a sense, it's lost its power, but that's a good thing, you know? Because, like, it's not used to defame anyone anymore. It's not used to make anyone feel bad. If anything, it's, just, it's an acknowledgement of a passion that they have for, you know, movies, comic books, video games, whatever. Um, I don't know how much you heard. You heard my BTILC podcast, right? Uh, like, yeah, I, I heard like, sort of, yeah, the first one. Yeah. Cool. So I do another stuff. podcast, too. Uh huh. Uh, called the Vundacast. That's for my website, vundablog.com. And uh, on that podcast, I actually do that podcast. Uh, I do it with several hosts, mm -hmm. but one of my like most consistent hosts, of course, is my girlfriend, who's now my fiance, uh, Danielle. Congratulations! So, <laughs> thank you very much. And I'll send you a link to my proposal because I actually did like a cool Star Wars proposal thing and a oh, kilt. It was like a whole man. big deal. It was really cool. Yeah, yeah Mary Ann. Um, I could hear you right now. She, you would hear her do that, like that girl thing of. Oh, whatever you do, don't show it to Marianne because every guy who shows it to their girlfriend, uh huh, it, it ruins their girlfriend forever. So maybe oh. wait ten years and then show it to her. But I don't want. She's I don't want to get you guys in a fight. Oh no, we <laughs> we we still haven't fought, which is I think that comes back to the fact that we both have great senses of humor, and we both are. I am. I am just as quick to make fun of myself as I am anyone else. And that stops me from being a huge horse's ass. <laughs> and, and, and likewise with her. <laughs> um, honey, he was talking about uh, how he proposed to his fiance. Aww. Yeah. So yeah. she's, she's going to want to see that. It's, it's okay uh -huh. though. <laughs> okay. Um, so I was wondering, I do this podcast with my girlfriend. You do a podcast with your girlfriend. Uh -huh. I'm sure we have some of the same, uh, like, um, not problems, but like some of the same grievances. Like when you record, do you guys do it like right after you watch the movie, or uh, like it, does it, it take time? Like, you know, it take, dude, it takes a lot. I mean, you know, when like when you're yeah. doing movies about po about you're doing podcasts about movies, it's not just the time that it takes to record; it's the time it takes to watch it. And like I, so. It's, and it's really hard to do that with, with people in our situations, especially, I feel like you're like late, mid to late 20s is a time, it's like, it's a time when everyone's trying to do everything. So like, I've, I've been super busy with like work, uh, trying to do my own little projects with the podcast, also um, getting deeper and deeper into like the LA improv scene and all of these things. So even just for me, when it comes time to record a podcast with like Marianne or anyone else, sometimes it's just a lot easier to not, <laughs> not plan. Um, yeah. Because it's already like eight o'clock and you're thinking like, wow, we, we can either watch this and then do the podcast after. And it's, we're going to be going to bed at one and we got to be up at like eight to go to work, you know, just go work in steps. Um, so that's how we've been doing lately. I, I, for a while I did have a, uh, I did have a thing where I would just tell them to watch it and then we'd meet up for an hour and that's when we would record. So it, it kind of ebbs and flows, but it's like, it's all about planning, man, <laughs> you know? 
I'm yeah. Like, and yeah, I mean, how do you guys do it? Well, see, it's weird. I, I luckily I record off of like I record off a couple things, but one of the main things I record, I have like a little audio recorder mm -hmm. um, that's handheld, so I can take that in the car. So sometimes I'll record like right after we leave a movie theater and just like in the car, just get like initial reactions and stuff, and then I'll cobble it together together later. Mm -hmm. I, it, I I literally record like every chance I get. Sometimes I go to get coffee. Uh -huh. At Starbucks, if I have 15 minutes, I'll be like, I guess I'll get 15 more minutes of yeah. podcasts out of you. It's like squeezing an orange. And then every once in a while, I'm like desperate for an episode, even though there's no real deadline because I haven't really given one for myself. Yeah. Every once in a while, I'll be desperate for an episode and she'll not be in the mood to podcast. Uh -huh. And then that's a very interesting podcast because I am like trying to do one by myself, but with someone uh -huh. else. So, oh, you know, yeah. I mean, that happens sometimes you got to force it every once in a while. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that happens with us. And we end up having a good time. It's just the hardest thing is to block out the, that four hours. Yeah. And then, and then push play. And then after that, it's all gravy. But, you know, mentally preparing yourself to be like, all right, it is, you know, I like to have my podcast up on like Tuesday or Wednesday. Now, that hasn't happened in you know, like a month or so. But like I try and at least do that, um, and then, but in doing so, it's like, like she she had this uh, weird work schedule where she was working Sunday through Thursday, nine to five, and Whoa. my new job it's 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 typical hours, you know, Monday through Friday, nine to five. So really, we only have one day, which is Saturday, to actually mm -hmm. be together and just enjoy each other's company. And just be ourselves. And but then even then, I have shows every week at seven o'clock. So yeah. to to then try and take all of that into account and record a podcast somewhere in it, because like we still need to be a couple, you know. Like we can't just no, be co-hosts. Sure. We got to do fun stuff. And and so it's 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 a it's definitely a balancing act. Like anyone that can host a podcast with their girlfriend. Uh, I feel it makes you stronger because it's definitely that like it's that project, it's that thing that you both have ownership of. Um, I, I started this podcast with my then girlfriend Cody, and uh, I mean we only I think we only got like a month into it before we broke up just because I was just like, hey, we're like yeah we're friends, but like this is not a thing really. Like we're just friends. That's it. And then yeah. I kept and then I kept in it, and I. I maybe dated one or two people in between Marianne. I just never really wanted to record with them because it is, a, it's like, man, that's a, it, it, for me, that's like a big step, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's like, it's like, a, that's like, it's like uh, recording a podcast, leaving your toothbrush, <laughs> ask them to move in with you. Like that's, no. that's on the, that's on the scale. <laughs> You're, you're creating a, a baby for the universe that's going to live on without you as like a testament to, you know, preserve that time period. Yeah. Uh, it's, exactly. it's, it's, yeah, it's almost like a, like a marriage. It's important. It kind of is. Yeah. I mean, it's like, um, it's, I mean, I can only imagine how celebrities feel. It's also bullshit, they, but. <laughs> well, I can only imagine how celebrities feel when they like make a movie with, a, with like an ex and they're like, oh. Like, how does Ben Affleck... Feel? I'm sure he hates Geely anyways, but, like, like he's did a whole movie with Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, and Jennifer Garner, you know? Now he's... He oh, just man. loves making movies with his eventual exes. <laughs> he can't... Poor, poor Batman. That's the real tragedy of Batman, <laughs> is that he has failed relationships that he is forever tied to. Yeah, I think his best relationship is Matt Damon. <laughs> For sure. And now they can legally get married if they wanted to. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, is there anything... I mean, I'm, I'm having a great um, time. So, up, up to you. Too. My, my girlfriend's going to pull me away any second, I'm sure. Because I've, <laughs> I've, I've taken up too much time for a BTILC uh, podcast this week. <laughs> but I'm trying, to, I'm trying to do more. Um, I just wanted to uh, talk about my... Unplug uh, my office whiteboard, uh, dot com. Your yeah. blog site? Yeah. It's, uh, it's, my, wanna... uh, it's, yeah, uh, my, well, my office whiteboard comes from when I worked at this office job, and I really hated it. 
I'm originally from Connecticut, and uh, I worked in an office. I, I studied journalism, and I always wanted to write and be creative. And I always, I always had an interest in like improv and comedy. And just in Connecticut, there's not that many uh, places to do that, or to learn, or to grow. So I started a Tumblr called My Office Whiteboard, and it was just literally things I would draw on my office whiteboard. And then oh, eventually, cool. and then I eventually got, uh, I, I eventually left that job, moved to LA. And that's just kind of, I feel like the name My Office Whiteboard to me holds this like kind of sentimental thing of like, this is, this is kind of like, like, it, I guess it's almost like the same way of like a Tumblr or a, a Pinterest kind of thing is like, when you look at that, you see like what I am. So it's like cool stuff I see in LA, like. I do some my, like I do some very very basic architecture type articles, uh, some articles on like like weird pockets of the city. Uh, obviously, it's where I host my podcast, and then I also post uh, you know videos when I can make them of just the of just dumb shit <laughs> that comes into my head. And of so course, there's uh, gonna be so uh, there's a, a a lot to check out. For Charlie and Marianne of GF Movies podcast, do you prefer GF movies or girlfriend movies? What, what do you? I prefer. I mean, girlfriend movies is, is the name, and GF movies is is well, the Twitter. Yeah, is the Twitter. Uh, I think it's also that it may be the might be the Tumblr as well. But yeah, we're at GF Movies uh, on Twitter. Uh, you can also find us. Uh, I think it's my office whiteboard on Tumblr. Um, but yeah, it's just fun. It's fun stuff to do. It's funny, like it takes a lot of like you know this because you 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 do you know multiple podcasts. It it takes a lot of time, and um, like I've been doing this now for in in this form, I've been doing it now for like a year, you know. And my main goal in the next year is to try and get into the LA Podcast Fest. But it's cool. like I got to get those audience members, <laughs> and like like not even getting paid. I just kind of want to like, and like even then like. If you've got more than like fifty viewers, more than like fifty to hundred viewers, you gotta realize you're doing better than like ninety-five percent of the people who host podcasts. You know, just the really that, is that like, the case? You, Whoa, I'm psyched now. <laughs> I'm so yeah, psyched. Yeah, because like if you can just like because it's all about just kind of like keep making content. Yeah. If you can just, just keep study. doing it. You're just gonna outlast everyone, and then when people come to, it's like when you when you uh, got in touch with me, you, like you were able to go through all of my backlog and and listen to shows and stuff and that's you know that's kind of why you do it like it's not it like that's what's so perfect about podcasting and i i was in radio for a, for a brief time and what's so much better about podcasting is that these little conversations that you have they can just they exist now forever it's not mm -hmm. just checking in once a week and then it's gone you know so it's a it's what we in journalism called evergreen. It's evergreen content. It'll always be there, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's and it's evergreen in that it's like you know a tree. It's a long term goal. It's not necessarily mm -hmm. short term. Uh, you know, you're, 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 we're not we're not like the big giant movie studios that need opening weekend to be great or else <laughs> exactly we're screwed forever <laughs> yeah. and we'll never work again. I mean. Luckily, we're the plucky independent guys that make a movie every like six years. But when they do, it's a it's a work of passion, and you know, no one had to tell them what to do. <laughs> so, so you're a Smodco fan as well? I do. Yeah, I try and I mean, I try and listen to a lot of podcasts, especially now because I got like an hour commute in the morning and at and at night. So I listen to Smodco. Uh, I, I've been to a couple live tapings of Hollywood Babylon. Uh, oh, Nerdist, awesome. Nerdist is obviously great, and uh, Bill Burr podcast is one of my favorites. Sure. Uh, these guys out of New Zealand, uh, the worst idea of all time, where they they watch a movie every single week. They watch the same movie every week for a year. So they're watching <laughs> Sex in the City too. Oh my god! For, and I think they're on like week forty-five. And oh my god! It's, it's so interesting because it's you get to just watch, you get to watch them just slowly fall into insanity as they make themselves watch this awful, awful movie. <laughs> and then, uh, and then another one I like is uh, the weekly Weekly Planet podcast out of Australia. 
uh, and there we go. And that's, that's, and that's the thing, dude. It's like, I, I can listen to someone in Australia talk about Star Wars every week, you know? <laughs> like, and then someone from, you know, the Philippines can listen to your thing. Like, it's, it's insane. It's a, yeah. there's, a, there's a theory out there. There's like an internet theory that all you need is 10,000 fans willing to buy something from you. If you can do that, then you can actually make a living being an internet personality, you know? And I'm not saying I, I, I am nowhere near that, but that's a small number considering the amount of connected people out there, you know? So that kind of yeah. gives everyone hope of like, I may be working this job right now, but as long as I can do this one thing that just makes me happy, like it, I get genuine joy from, from being on podcasts, uh, doing my own podcast, and if I can just have a good time doing that, then it doesn't matter if like the shoe ever falls and like, you, know, you get sponsors or live tapings and all that stuff. But if it does, <laughs> it doesn't take that much, you know? All you need is a, is a small set of devoted fans that are willing to give you literally $5. <laughs> Yeah. And their time, you know, ultimately their time. And their time, yeah. And like every every time I I, I hear a friend or something telling me I, they listen to a podcast, like, oh, that that just like, that touches me, you know? I'm, I'm sure. so grateful that to anyone who wants to listen to me just talk about movies. Like, that's, a, that's insane <laughs> that, that anyone thinks I'm funny enough or clever enough to just listen every week, you know? <laughs> For sure, and one of the one of the greatest things about podcasting with one's girlfriend is that you get to be creative with someone you really care about, and mm. get to see how creative that person can be. Yeah, and share your little funny jokes with like the whole world. That's like such a beautiful thing, and so so much fun. Like yeah. I loved. I think it was at the end of the Con Air podcast that you guys started riffing off of. Uh, Harrison Ford's get off my plane and then <laughs> you guys are like uh, when he's a brain surgeon get off my brain like yeah. that was a great fun little game that was like super creative super fun mm -hmm. uh, I highly recommend and that's, it. That's, and that's what and that's what we do all the, like that's what me and her do uh, no matter what but I think that's also like the joy of, of, of dating a performer or someone who has that that gene in them to want to make other people laugh is like it's one thing for us to have our intimate moments and just cuddle and all that but then you get to see them on stage or in front of the microphone and they just start to shine it's like oh oh there's oh there's this other side of you that i'm also in love with and that's great so it's yeah it's like you're, you're right you get to see, i think by by doing creative things with your significant other you actually get to experience all of them and not just like the little part and I think that can go for anything. You don't have to be like, you don't have to be musicians. You don't have to be anything. Like y'all can just go to like color me mine and paint a bunch of pots. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like it's simple, but it's like, I think that's a part of having a real successful relationship is willing to, willing to show that side of you and willing to accept that side of them, you know? Okay. One last question about relationships and about sure. Big Trouble in Little China. And yes. then we'll go off and ride this big, rig truck podcast into the sunset um there are two main relationships in the film big trouble in little china that are romantic mm -hmm. there is the relationship between uh jack burton and gracie law and the relationship between wang and meow yin which yeah. one do you think and you know it might seem like there's one obvious answer but uh -huh. i want you to double think about it twice what do you okay. think is the more interesting podcast? A podcast between Jack Burton and Gracie Law or a podcast between Meow Yin and uh, <laughs> Wang? <laughs> All good. right. I think, I think both. I'll give you my answer, but then I want to give you this long non-answer. Oh, um, I like it. Okay. <laughs> I, I want to hear, I want to hear Jack and, and Gracie. I want to hear that one. That's, that I feel is the more interesting one. Because she's, She's, I mean, she's smart. She's a lawyer. She's an activist, uh, and she is very capable. You know, she's a she's a tough, independent broad, and he is her exact opposite. He may not she, he may not be brainy, but he's kind of 
he's got some like brawn behind him and he's he's like street smart so i would like i think they complement each other great that being said though i think both would be great and here's why because i think wang and and his fiance they're like an npr podcast you know <laughs> they're like they're like an episode of serial so like what the, what you would get from them is you get to hear their stories of growing up in china and then you get to hear like how their lives were sort of like paralleled while she was still in china waiting for him to you know earn a living and then also why he's like also, this brand new immigrant just trying to struggle to make things happen and i think that's like that's a like the journalist in me wants to write about that one because it's like the the human interest like the you know, like real pull on your heartstrings kind of thing but so the comedian in me wants to hear the the kurt russell and and uh, kim cattrall podcast <laughs> So you're imagining like this epic, dramatic podcast that is ultimately going to conclude with, and then I came to America and this creepy old guy <laughs> yeah. took me away I mean, and hung me up and tried to poke exactly, me. Exactly, yeah. Love, love. And she's like, does this happen often? And he's like, no. <laughs> this is not what America is like. Well, it kind of is, but it's not. <laughs> see, I, I went the other way because, see, I think the obvious answer is Jack's a great talker. Gracie's uh -huh. a great talker. Yeah. Obviously, they're going to have great conversations. But no, they won't have great conversations. Because mm -hmm. Jack is too low brow for her. So uh -huh. they'll probably turn it into like a bunch of dumb jokes that she doesn't want to talk about. Or like uh -huh. redneck topics she isn't into. And she's going to be like all SJW, social justice warrior. Yeah, and try yeah. to enlighten him on stuff he can't get. It's going to be too discordant. Mm -hmm. Wow. Meow Yin and Wang, uh -huh. they will really hit it off because much like you, Meow Yin, she's been in China living off pennies. She yeah. doesn't have time to watch movies that are coming out. While Wang is indoctrinated into American culture. So uh -huh. his podcast will be showing Meow Yin all the great action oh, movies and I films see. that she's never seen, right? Yeah. Uh, like it, would just, it would be called like like a, <laughs> a, a, a arranged girl, arranged marriage movies. Well, well, well see, I, I remember it being an arranged marriage, but he does have this, like, I've known her since I was a kid. So I was oh. like, okay, so maybe there is a love there that we're not aware of because uh, I, when I've shown this to people, they're like, this is fucking creepy that she's basically a sex slave, right? And I was like, no, no, no they love each other. Um, but I think... Yeah, you could call it like a a Wang education because <laughs> he's teaching her. <laughs> like, and it could and why like why even stop at movies? Like, have one episode be completely devoted to her trying Oreos for the first time. Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, that would be pretty cool because like that's a that's an interesting slice of life right there. And then she would always have the upper hand in every conversation because she could just be like. It took your dumbass friend to save me. It wasn't even you. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, you let me get kidnapped by a Chinese demon spirit. <laughs> like, oh, okay. That's like, that's the Trump card, always. <laughs> uh, so, this was Charlie of the GF movies. Maybe uh, somewhere down the road, uh, we can introduce our uh, respective girlfriends to each other and do like a, a four-way podcast one day, maybe. Oh yeah, that'd be that'd be a blast. I mean, we got <laughs> we definitely yeah. I mean, I got the recording equipment to make it happen on my end, and so do you. So that'd be a, I think that'd be a blast. We can all watch the same movie or something and like cross pollinate. Uh, yeah. Feel free that if you want to, uh, you know, plug this podcast as much as you want or steal any of this audio content and add it as like a bonus feature on your podcast. You know, just feel uh, free. Nah, well, I'm gonna. Whatever I was thinking want. about that, but then like I don't want to double. Like, for the few fans I have, I want them to listen to your podcast, you know? I don't want them to hear your episode on my stream, you know? Because then I'm, like, kind of stealing viewers. So I'm going to come up with a, a quick, just, like, five-minute thing of just, like, hey, guys, uh, bonus content if you want it. Go check out, you know, Big Trouble in Little China podcast. Or whatever. Uh, it's just me, you know? Whatever you want to do, I'll, I will plug you on the Vundacast and on the VTILC show. BETILC podcast and uh, do what we got to do. Um, thank right, you man. so much for sitting down with me, Charles, Charlie. Oh, I, thank you I, for having me. It's again, like, I'm, I'm glad we could finally get this going because this, this has been months in the making. <laughs>
for sure. Um, so it's been a pleasure. You people, sit tight, hold the fort, and keep the home fires burning. And if we're not back by dawn, call the president. Wundercast? Give yeah. it up for Wundercast, man. What an adorable name.